Okay, so clock says four o'clock, so, uh, so let's begin. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's doing okay from their uh, living room or wherever they're viewing this lecture. Um, so I'm here in the classroom. Uh, so if you weren't here at the beginning, I was saying how weird it is to you know, look out into a, a room of empty chairs. Um, but I know you guys are all here in spirit, so you know, I appreciate you guys being here. Um, so hopefully everyone's dealing with the crisis okay. Um, you know, it's, it's really troubling and kind of unprecedented times. So, you know, in, in some sense, you know, this, the, this class, you know, finite elements should take second seat to, you know, just your own safety and, you know, those of your loved ones. So make sure you take, you're taking care of yourself and you're taking care of, you know, all the people that are important to you. So that's going to be first and foremost. Okay. Um, but with that, uh, let's get started. So let's start our first virtual lecture. Um, for the uh, may, for maybe the the rest of the semester, right? So today is Tuesday, March seventeenth, uh, two thousand twenty, and this is going to be our first test of the um, Zoom lecture. So I, I, you might hear me repeating myself a lot today because it's so weird not having you guys here to to get any feedback. Um, but I'm going to try my my best. Okay. So the plan for today is to um, first of all, I I know a lot of you guys have been e emailing me. Um, with concerns that now that, you know, um, it's going to be much harder to access ANSYS in the computer labs, especially with some of the recent developments today. Um, you know, it's, it's been hard, it's going to be hard to access ANSYS. So I have a solution for you. Um, it's maybe not the best solution, but it should be sufficient enough just to get you through this class, at least through all the activities. So first, we're going to um, go over how you can access ANSYS through the virtual machine. Right? Um, after that, we're going to um, launch into the activity. So I have an ANSYS activity planned for today. Uh, so the, uh, the PDF for that and the, um, and the geometry for that is gonna be posted on Titanium or it's on Titanium right now. Uh, so if you go there, you can go ahead and download it. Right? Um, so let's see, let's see. Besides that, oh, announcements. So, the, uh, um, so according to the, the president's office, we're gonna have an, an additional non-instructional day uh, so this Thursday actually is going to be, you know, technically we're not supposed to have any class. So actually to, after today, the next class that we're going to have is next Thursday, because this Thursday is um, a non-instructional day and next Tuesday is a non-instructional day. So, um, you know, if we're not having those, then we're going to, you know, next time we're going to pick it up is next Thursday. So that's going to be a long time. That's a lot of lectures that we're going to skip out on. So even though on uh, Thursday, we're technically not supposed to have a lecture, I might uh, record a lecture and post it because um, I was planning on going over mesh convergence, which is going to be a really important part of your project uh, and just a really important just aspect of finite elements in, in general. So um, that's what I'm thinking of. But it's, uh, we'll, we'll see if I end up finishing the notes for it. Um, and if I do, I will definitely let you guys know through announcements on Titanium. Okay. Um, so before we begin today, are there uh, any questions that people have in the class? All right, so we have a question. So uh, is this lecture going to be posted after I finish today's lecture? So yes. Um, so is what the nice thing about Zoom is that it kind of automatically records everything. So actually right now it, it's actually recording. Um, and so what's going to happen is after the lecture, I think it takes Zoom maybe about an hour or two to process the, uh, the video. It's going to send me a link to download the, uh, the file, right? So after the lecture or once they send me that file, I'm going to download it. And I'm, going to I'm going to crop the file so that, um, you know, I actually started this stream at about 3.30 today, just to make sure everything was up and running. I'm gonna kind of crop out the uh, all the beginning part and then post it on YouTube so you guys can, can view, okay? Because um, Zoom has its own kind of video player that it can um, show you stuff, but I think because they're they're getting swarmed right now with the tons of, you know, university lectures and virtual meetings that I, they're, they're only gonna keep the file for 24 hours. So um, what I need to do, I need to download that and then post it on YouTube. But that'll be up basically as, as soon as I, as soon as I can do it, okay? Are there any more questions? So you can uh, you can just put the, the questions in the chat and I can um, I can view it and I can read it. Midterm statistics. Yes, good uh, good point. So uh, I finished grading your midterms. I almost totally forgot about that. Um, so that your score should be on titanium. Um, so I'm not going to post the statistics, but I can tell you. Uh, so the average on the midterm was a 39 out of 50. Uh, so that was about a 78%. Uh, so you guys did really well. And I was really happy with the midterm. Um, and, um, you know, obviously, you know, since we're not meeting face to face anymore, it's going to be uh, really hard for me to pass the exams back to you unless you actually come to my office, which, you know, I don't really recommend at this time. Um, so if you want to see your, your actual midterm, uh, I can scan it for you. 
Um, so just like it was mentioned in the email yesterday, if you want me to scan your midterm, just send me an email um, and then I can scan the midterm and I can send you an, an email for it. So, um, so uh, if you want me to scan your email or scan your, uh, scan your midterm, just send me an email just as soon as possible. So I, I, I kind of prefer to do kind of a lot of them at once. So I'm not, you know, running back and forth between the scanner. So uh, if you want me to scan your midterm, if you can send me a email by the end of today, then I can just do a bunch of them tomorrow morning and, um, you know, kind of get them all done at once. Okay. Um, any other, any other questions before we begin today? Okay, uh, so if there's no more questions, let's go ahead and get started. So let me share my screen. Let me bring the chat back up. So can everyone see my screen okay? Okay, great. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over how to um, launch the virtual machine. Okay? Because, you know, as of today, what I've, what I've learned that um, is that they're actually, you know, the original plan was for the campus to stay open despite, you know, suspending uh, in-person classes. Um, so, you got, so originally, you guys would be, still be able to access the computer lab and, and run ANSYS from here, which is not the, per the most perfect solution because that requires you to be here in person, uh, but at least it was something. But actually... This morning, what I learned was that they're actually shutting everything down. So the, uh, you know, the computer apps are locked. Um, so I don't know if even I'm supposed to be in here, but no one's come to be angry with me yet. So I'm going to stay in here, you know, as long as I can, right? Uh, so for those of you who can't access ANSYS from home, we have a solution for you, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to access ANSYS through the virtual machine, okay? Um, so the, where you guys need to start is you need to go to your portal. So if you go to my.fortin.edu, and log into your portal, okay? And you should, hopefully, I think you should see a, a, a menu like this. Okay? So I'll give everyone a second to do that. And while everyone's logging in, you know, I, I wanna say that if, if you can download the student version of ANSYS and you can run it on your computer uh, and it runs just fine, I would highly recommend that because I think that's gonna be a lot faster than, uh, than what you're gonna run on the virtual machine. Because the virtual machine, I was actually impressed with how I, by how well it ran, um, but it's, it's still gonna be slower than if you ran it um, um, you know, on your own personal machine. Okay. Okay. So is everyone logged into um, their portal? Okay. Um, so uh, from the portal, you can look on this left-hand side here, right? Um, so on the search bar, what you're going to search is virtual. Okay. And then by doing that, you can uh, click this button called virtual computing lab. Okay. So let's go ahead and click that. So this is kind of the, the login page to, uh, to do a lot of, uh, of virtual computing, okay? Uh, so we're gonna use it to do ANSYS, but you can actually use this to, to run a lot of other programs. So I think uh, last I spoke with IT, they got the majority of our programs up and running on virtual computing. The one that's still kind of giving them fits is SolidWorks. So SolidWorks is a little bit uh, heavy uh, compared to the other programs, okay? Um, okay, so let's um, log in. Um, so you'll become, you'll first come to this login page. So you're going to click uh, CSUF login. Okay. So you can click proceed to login. So from here, you can uh, log into your, uh, uh, you know, portal again. Um, so if you, uh, it, it might, it's been a while since I logged in, so it might have kicked me out. But maybe for you guys, it's, uh, uh, you're still in there. Okay, uh, so once you've entered your password again, you should come to this page right here, okay? Uh, virtual computing. Uh, so where you want to click first is this button right here on the left-hand side called the reservations, okay? So in order to use the virtual computing, you actually need to reserve some space because what the virtual computing actually is, it's, it's kind of a big cluster of, uh, of you know, computers. And, and you know, in order for you to use it, you kind of need to reserve space for yourself so that you know, no one can really disturb your, uh, your computer, okay? So go ahead and click reservations, okay? Um, if you wanted to show you a notification, you can, okay? And then you should come to the screen that said you have no current reservations, right? So from here, what you need to do is you need to create a new reservation. So you can go ahead and click new reservation, right? And then from here, you, might, you guys might not have this by default, um, but it'll ask you to select an environment that you wish to use uh, from this list, okay? So if you click this drop-down menu, you can see there's a lot of different environments. 
So they basically created a different instance for all the different programs, just so you know, each of the virtual machines don't get too overloaded. So the one that we want to use is ANSYS, okay? Uh, so from this list, you're going to go down and you're gonna select the option for ECSME ANSYS, okay? So the ECS is obviously our college, so it's engineering computer science. ME stands for mechanical engineering and ANSYS is ANSYS, okay? So you can go ahead and click that, right? Um, so then it'll, gonna, it's gonna ask you some stats about your environment. So the first thing you're gonna click is, uh, you know, it's gonna ask you when you want to use this environment. So most of the time you want to use it now, um, unless you're planning on making a burrito or something, then you can schedule it for maybe 30 minutes in the future. Okay? Um, and the next thing you need to select is your duration. Okay? So the duration is really important. So the duration is basically how long that you're gonna have your reservation on the, uh, on the virtual machine. Okay? Um, so for here, you know, it's, um, you know, I would recommend that you pick something, if you plan on working on ANSYS for a long time, I would pick you know, kind of the maximum that you can. Uh, so you can pick four hours. Um, but, you know, keep in mind that, you know, when you reserve space on the virtual machine, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a shared resource be, be, um, between all the students here at, um, at Cal State Fullerton. So, you know, if, you're only, if you know that you're only going to use it so for, say, like this class session, you can use it for a less amount of time. So uh, I know that, you know, I'm going to leave this room in less than two hours. So let's uh, click two hours. Okay. And then uh, before you click create reservation, you should see here um, there's going to be an estimated load time. Okay. So it's going to take the computer a little bit of time to create your, your virtual instance. Okay. So actually right now it's actually pretty good. So it's a uh, heart minutes. Um, so it's less than three minutes. Right. So actually when I was using it earlier, um, it would took me about um, 12 minutes to create a reservation. Okay. Um, so what I heard from the IT is that can really vary depending on how many people are using it at once. Um, but you know, hopefully it's not going to take too long. Okay. So right now it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and click create reservation. Oh, um, this is new. So there's only going to be uh, some available time. So I guess this is their way to kind of schedule it. So not everyone's using it at the same time. Okay. Um, so let's go pick the first available time, which is after our lecture, unfortunately. All right. So hopefully you guys are, are, are going to be able to use this, or maybe it's overloaded right now because a lot of you guys are, are using it at the same time. Um, so it's good now it's, you know, it's scheduled. What it's done is it's changed the scheduled time to be 5.30 PM. So let's go ahead and click create reservation. And now it's even further because now you guys are using it even more. <laughs> okay. So I got one in. All right. Um, okay. Uh, so what this is telling me is that at 6.30 PM today, then it's going to, um, you know, uh, let me use the virtual machine. Right. Uh, so that just kind of goes to show you that, you know, this is, this is a shared resource. So, um, you know, a, a lot of students um, here at Cal State Fulton, we're going to be using this together. Um, so, you know, you, you should really be uh, judicious when you use this service. Okay? Uh, so unfortunately, I can't show you what happens next because it's, it's not going to let me on until 6, uh, 630. Um, but I can tell you what's going to happen. So for those of you who were able to get into the system, you should see, you know, if you look at kind of where my mouse is to the left of delete reservation, there should be a, a tooltip there that tells you, you know, it's pending, and it's, uh, it tells you the amount of time remaining until the, your virtual instance is ready. Okay. Um, so once that's ready, then uh, then that pending sign will turn into a button that you can click that says, uh, I think, begin reservation or start your instance. Uh, so you go ahead and click that. Right. So when you click that, uh, another window is going to pop up. And then that window is going to give you your login information, okay? Because when you first log into the virtual system, it, it creates kind of your own unique username and password. Um, so uh, once that window pops up, write down your username and password. Okay? Um, then once that's ready, you can go ahead and I think it's going to ask you to download a file. So then once you download that file, uh, you can open that file. And then once you open that file, that creates the, uh, the virtual instance, okay? Um, so I think what I'm going to do, since uh, since I don't think I'm going to be able to show you it right now, just because it's uh, you know it's, it's a little bit overloaded. Probably what I'll do at like maybe 10 o'clock tonight, uh, when hopefully a lot of you guys aren't using it anymore, I'll uh, uh, I'll, I'll make a tutorial video to kind of show you kind of end to end how you how you do this, okay? And I'll put the instructions into a PDF too, so that's going to be easier. Kind of if you're looking to just you know see I forgot just one step of the process, you can just look at that that part of the PDF, okay? Um, so you can look forward to that probably tomorrow. So I'm going to put that on titanium, right? Um, so if you're, uh, um, you know, if you don't have access to ANSYS, then this is your option. But again, you know, if you, if you have access to ANSYS, 
through your own personal computer, then I would go with that. Um, just because, you know, as you can, you know, as we demonstrated in real time that this system, even though it's, it's, it's great for, you know, if you can get onto it, you know, if, uh, you know, if a lot of people are using it at the same time, it can be a little bit unreliable. So, you know, just so we can keep this available for the people that really need it. Um, if you have ANSYS on your own machine or you can download the student version, um, then I would use that. Okay. So basically, if you have a Windows machine, I would try to use the student version. Um, but this is mostly for the Mac people and for those who don't have a, you know, a laptop that can, um, that can support that. Um, so are there any questions on the virtual machine before we move on? Right, so if you have, uh, if you have ANSYS on your uh, computer, then you don't need to make a reservation. So you just run it just straight from your computer, just like, um, you know, just like normal. Right? So if you, haven't, if you haven't downloaded ANSYS onto your Windows machine, I would go ahead and do that. So remember, there's, uh, there's instructions on the Titanium for how to download the student version for that. All right, so the first question is, uh, are we gonna be able to do activities and project on the student version? So the activities you can definitely do. Um, so actually, you know, before the class today, as you know, just to test the, uh, the virtual machine, I was able to do the entire, um, the act entire activity today on the virtual machine. Uh, so it was a little bit slow, um, you know, a little bit slower than probably the machines you have here in the lab, but it's definitely doable, okay? Um, the, for the project, you know, it, of course, it's gonna depend on the complexity of, the, of your project. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out probably in the proposal stage. So, you know, we, we haven't, you guys haven't submitted your proposals yet. Um, so if you, if you, um, you know, if you, if you know that you're not going to be able to use the, the student version, or if you are using the student version, or if you're using the reservation, uh, definitely let me know. And then, you know, I can help you kind of tailor the project to kind of make sure that you can do it appropriately. Okay. okay so the next question is you have a, so someone has 2019 R, um, that should be uh, sh that should be new enough for the rest of the material. Yes. Uh, so if you have you know anything 2018 2019 for ANSYS, then you should be good to go for um, um, for either this uh, you know for either the activities or for the project. You should be good. Okay. Okay. So it looks like the the student version of ANSYS is uh, upgraded to 2020 R1. So that should be perfectly fine too. Um, I'm not aware of any kind of big changes that ANSYS is making. Um, so a lot of times when they upgrade the the version, they're just kind of adding some ancillary features that you know a few people in the uh, in the industry are using, but they're not gonna they're not gonna gut a lot of the uh, the core functionality. And you know in this class we're mostly just sticking to the core functionality for uh, for ANSYS. Okay. All right. Any other questions before we move on to the uh, um, we move on to the activity for today? Okay. Uh, so of course, you know, if you have any questions, definitely, you know, message me. You can either message me privately on the Zoom or you can, you know, put it out there and I'll, I'll be sure to answer because I have the chat kind of, you know, right here, right in front of my, my face. Okay, uh, so let's move on. Uh, so if you go back to the Titanium, you know, you should notice that there's a, uh, a new assignment posted. Okay. Right. So if you go to Titanium. Okay. 410. All right, so you come all the way down here to week nine. So in week time, week nine, you should see here that, um, you know, I have ANSYS activity three posts. So we're gonna be doing an, um, a finite element analysis of a signpost. So you go ahead and click the, uh, the link and you should be able to download this PDF. Okay. So you go ahead and download that PDF and open it up. Um, that should give you kind of the, uh, the starting point. And the other thing that you're gonna need is the geometry file, right? So you can go ahead and click down this uh, solid signpost geometry which I don't think I've done on this computer. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. Okay. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. So let's go ahead and open the PDF. Uh, and then I'll kind of walk you through, uh, kind of talk you through, you know, what we're, what we're doing with this activity and, you know, what's, what's new in it kind of relative to the other stuff. Okay. okay. Uh, so the title of this activity is signpost design, right? Um, so, you know, just from the, uh, um, let's see. Let me see if I can do this. Okay. Oh, that didn't work out that well. Okay, um, so, so far, you know, we've done two ANSYS activities. So we did a two-dimensional plate with the hole, and then we did a, a three-dimensional um, simulation on a bike crank, okay? 
Um, so kind of stepping up the complexity one more time, we're going to be doing a kind of a little bit more of a complex um, object. So we're going to be doing a signpost. Okay? So what's going to be different about this signpost is that it's, uh, it's going to be an assembly. Okay? So we're going to have uh, actually three different parts um, to, this, uh, um, um, to this geometry that we're going to um, you know, apply uh, some finite element analysis to. Okay? Uh, so there's two main parts, I would say. So there's going to be a rectangular plate. So that's going to be this kind of guy right here. Okay? Um, that's going to consist kind of of the sign part of the sign post. Okay? And then there's also the column. Right? So there's going to be a narrow column that supports this. Right? So that's going to be that guy right there. Um, so some examples of this that you can kind of see in reality are uh, street signs. Um, so actually, you know, I think the geometry of this, uh, of this cat was actually designed to be like one of those freeway signs uh, that you see on top of, you know, the freeway. Okay. Um, and then also for, um, you know, any kind of signpost like that. Okay. okay, so there's a question right now. So the question is uh, um, boundary conditions for each mating attachment. So yes, so we're going to go over um, a new thing. So one thing that's going to be new about assemblies is you have to define how each of the different parts of the assemblies, they're going to interact each other or how they're going to meet. Okay? Uh, so we're going to be going over that and how we define those, those conditions. Okay? Uh, well, that's going to come a little bit later. Okay. okay. Um, so here's the diagram that kind of uh, shows what we're going to use. Right? So uh, I've already kind of highlighted the geometry for you. Um, and then all these arrows that you see here are going to be the, uh, the loads. Okay? So we have four different loads that we're going to uh, consider. Uh, so this load up here this WZ1, this is a distributed load. So this load is going to be the weight of the sign. Right? I'm writing with the mouse right now, so it's going to be awful. Right? Um, next thing is we have this, um, this uh, force vector right here. So this is also going to be a weight, but it's going to be a weight of the post. Um, and then in addition to the weights, what we say is that this signpost, um, because it's, you know, it's going to be posted outside and it's, and it's very large in, in shape, it's going to be subjected to wind loads. Okay? So we have two wind um, loads. Okay? So we have this one. So we have a point load. Um, so that's going to be the load, um, you know, of wind that's kind of going to be hitting right at the plate. So, you know, that's going to, you know, the wind's going to impart a drag force that's going to be on there. And the other wind force is going to be this guy right here. Okay. So that's going to be wind that's going to be hitting the hitting the sign kind of from the from the left side. Okay. And you should what you should notice about this wind load here is that it's going to be a distributed load. Okay. Um, oh, search tools. Oh yes, I'm aware of the text, but I think it's uh, it's it's a little bit more humorous when I try to draw with the uh, when I try to write stuff with the uh, with the mouse. Okay. There's there's simple words anyway. Okay, okay. Um, so that's going to be the the situation, right? Um, so here are all the dimensions for the uh, for the signposts. So we have the height, um, you know, of the of the post. We have the height of the sign, um, and we have the location of the wind force and all of that. So you know, here I have the the I have the dimensions here. Um, you know, just for completeness, but all this, but the cat has already been completed for you. So you actually don't need to worry about this. Okay. Okay. And so here's some of the numbers for the, um, um, for the, uh, for the weights. Okay. Um, that we're going to input later. Okay. So I'll, I'll kind of save this, um, kind of when we do the boundary conditions. Okay. Uh, so let's jump to this, uh, let's jump to this paragraph right here. Um, so just to kind of highlight some of the new features that we haven't seen uh, before um, in our ANSYS activity. So we're going to be looking at, at an, an assembly of parts. So that's going to allow us to do a lot of kind of really interesting things. So each part, what we'll see is that each part of the assembly will be able to assign a different material property. Okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to assign structural steel for the post. And then we're going to say that the sign itself is going to be made of aluminum. Right? Um, so whenever you uh, do a finite element um, analysis of an assembly, it, you know, you can do that. You can assign different material properties to different parts. Um, you know, as was mentioned before, you, we have to define the, the connections. Um, so how the, how the parts are going to connect with each other. Um, and then finally, probably, you know, the most important is that we can mesh these two parts differently. Right? And this is going to be really key because, you know, if you notice back from the figure, 
the post itself is a very round object, so it's cylindrical in shape, right? And what we've learned from the different um, types of finite elements is that when you have a round object or an object with lots of curves, then usually tetrahedrons are, um, um, you know, are usually a good way to go. And then in contrast, for the actual assigned part of the, um, of the assembly, we have literally a rectangle, okay? Um, so there's nothing better at meshing a rectangle than a rectangle itself. So we're gonna use a hexahedra to mesh the, um, the sign part, okay? Okay, um, so those are kind of the big things with regards to the assembly. So other things that, we, uh, um, that we're gonna learn in this one um, that we didn't learn before is uh, how to apply a load at a, for at a point, okay? So that's called point force loading. Uh, so that's, we're going to use that to apply one of the, the wind forces. Right? Um, the next thing that we'll go over is what, what I call like a phantom surface. Right? Um, so sometimes, you know, you have to apply a, a force on a certain surface in your model, uh, but there's no kind of nice surface to actually do that. So a lot of times you kind of need to create like an extra surface on which you need to apply a, um, a load. Uh, so we'll go over what that is today and kind of how you would, uh, how you would do that. Uh, and then finally, since we have a load that varies with space, uh, we'll be able to specify that in ANSYS and we'll, we'll learn how to do that, okay? Okay, uh, so are there any questions before we get started for today? Okay, uh, so looks like there's no questions, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, whether you're on the virtual machine or you're on your uh, computer, um, or if you can't access the virtual machine, you know, you can follow along. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up ANSYS. So go ahead to your start menu and go to ANSYS, um, you know, whatever version that you have. And we're gonna open up Workbench, okay? So remember, Workbench is always a starting point for when we're gonna open up, uh, when we work with ANSYS. And then Workbench is gonna open up all of the other programs that we're going to, to do, okay? So go ahead and click Workbench. No. Okay. Uh, so here we've opened ANSYS. Okay. Um, so remember the first thing that we always do in ANSYS is we click, uh, we have to select the type of analysis that we're doing. Okay. Um, so everything that we've done so far is a structural mechanic simulation that's, um, that's steady in time. So the one that we choose for this is static structural. So let's go ahead and click static structural and drag it over into the, uh, into the schematic area to kind of just like it before. So it'll take a little time. Uh, so before we begin, uh, let's give this a name. So let's go ahead and double click this, uh, um, this area right here and we can give it a separate name. So I'm gonna call this eJimmy 410 Spring 2020 Signpost, okay? You can call it whatever you want as long as something makes sense. Okay, uh, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a custom material property. So we did this together last time, but let's uh, kind of remind ourselves because remember, the only property that's, uh, that's loaded in ANSYS by default is structural steel, okay? So we're going to use structural steel for the sign post, for the post itself, uh, but the sign is going to be made of aluminum, okay? So let's go see, let's go ahead and see how we do that. Uh, so go ahead and double click engineering data right here, okay? So if you double click engineering data, you're going to bring up this new menu, okay? So let me do that again, just to, uh, so you guys can see. So coming back to the original workbench screen, we can go ahead and double click uh, engineering data. Okay, and you can see here, this is all of the materials that ANSYS has loaded right now. So right now it's only structural steel, right? But now we wanna add a new, a new material uh, for aluminum 6061, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm clicking in this part right here uh, to add a new material, right? So let's click, let's give it a name. So let's call it aluminum 6061. I think we're doing T6. Uh, so after you type in the name and you hit enter, you're gonna create your new property just like that, okay? So the next thing we need to do is we need to add the material properties, okay? So right now it's, kind of, it's currently blank. So remember what we need to say is we need to um, say, we need to define the Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio. So in order to do that, we need to define an isotropic elasticity, right? 
So while you've selected this uh, aluminum 6061 right here, what you need to do is you need to go to the toolbox on the left-hand side. You can click the, um, the down menu for linear elastic, right? And then you're gonna click and hold isotropic elasticity because uh, isotropic, what that means is all the properties are the same in every direction. So that's kind of what we, we want, right? So go ahead and click this and drag this, and then you're gonna drag it over down to this bottom area um, right over here, okay? So once you release that, once you release that, okay? You should see isotropic elasticity kind of pop up here in the bottom menu. So let's go ahead and click this plus sign to expand this menu. And then what you'll see here is we need to input these two properties. We need to input the Young's modulus and we need to input the Poisson's ratio, okay? Uh, so let's go back to our PDF so we can check to see what those values are. So let's um, come back to the PDF, right? And then we can see, uh, where did I put it? Right here, okay. Um, so you can see at the top of page two, we can see that aluminum 6061 has a Young's modulus of one E7 PSI, and then a Poisson's ratio of 0 0.33, okay? So we need to add that information into ANSYS, okay? So let's come back to uh, ANSYS. Clear this, okay? Okay. And we need to input uh, one E7 for the PSI and then 0 0.33 for the Poisson's ratio, okay? So before we put in the Young's modulus, we need to make sure the, uh, the units are correct. So right now the default here is Pascal. So let's go ahead and click this down menu and then select PSI, okay? Because we need we want to input the Young's modulus in PSI, right? So let's go ahead and click that. And then for the Young's modulus, let's put in one E7, okay? So actually you can do scientific notation in ANSYS and it, it recognizes that pretty well, okay? So once you put that in, you can hit enter, right? And you can see as soon as you input the Young's modulus, it's filling in the other um, properties, okay? So you can see that we now have a bulk modulus and a shear modulus that's kind of automatically generated from the Young's modulus. Okay. Uh, so now let's put in the Poisson's ratio. So from the PDF, we know that the Poisson's ratio is 0 0.33. So let's click this uh, yellow box right here and put 0 0.33 okay. and then hit enter. Okay. Uh, and with that, you know, we've defined our two material properties. Okay. So we have structural steel, so that was there by default. And now we just put the materials for in for aluminum 6061. Okay. Uh, are there any questions on uh, on this part? Okay. If I'm ever, if I'm ever going too fast, just let me know. Just you know, just type in all caps in the chat, like slow down or something, and then uh, you know I, I can slow down. Okay. Because um, right now you know I, I'm I'm staring at an empty room right now. So, you know, I, I can't see, you know, kind of where you guys at. So, you know, if you're, uh, if you're kind of struggling to keep up, definitely let me know. Um, you know, I'm always happy to, to you know, um, slow down for you guys, okay? Okay, so with that, we're done inputting the engineering data. So let's go ahead and close this tab. So let's come up to the, uh, the top of the screen here uh, where it says A2 engineering data, and we're going to click this X, okay? Um, so once we've done that, we're back to the workbench. Uh, so now what we need to do is we need to import the geometry, okay? So let's go ahead and um, go to this third row right here, geometry. So let's go ahead and import the file that we've already done, okay? So just like we did last time, we can right-click this geometry. Uh, so after we right-click, we can go to the third option in the, um, um, in the menu for import geometry. So go ahead and click browse. So then once you do that, you can navigate to wherever you downloaded your solid signpost, okay? So remember the solid signpost geometry is what you, you should have downloaded from titanium, right? So this is the, uh, the geometry that I'm giving you. So go ahead and let's click that. Okay. And then that should load, right? So actually, you know, this, uh, this geometry was actually created using um, ANSYS design model. So actually, you know, it's, it's already kind of configured and good to go. Right? So remember, if you remember from last time, we had to double click this geometry just to check it. Um, in this case, since the geometry was already made in ANSYS for you, then it's already kind of good to, good to go, okay? Uh, so once you've loaded geometry, um, we, it's time to open up ANSYS Mechanical. And ANSYS Mechanical, that's the program that's gonna allow us to do the meshing and the simulation, okay? So let's go, and so to do that, you go to row four right here, you can double click model, okay? So at this point, this is gonna take, uh, you know, maybe a couple minutes. Uh, if you're on the virtual machine, it's gonna take you a, a bit longer, right? So a bunch of stuff's gonna come up. 
Don't worry, ANSYS is just selling your data to the, to the FBI. Okay, so mine popped up really quickly just because I'm on the, the lab computers, but I know, you know for those of you who are following on your laptop um, or, you're, uh, or you're following um, on the virtual machine, I know it's gonna take a little bit longer. So I'm gonna you know, give you guys a few, a few minutes to kind of do that before we move on, okay? So if you get this uh, this pop-up called uses chips, um, you know we don't need that, okay? And then we can go ahead and close it. All right, so the question is, is uh, AGDB um, files, do they read similar to IGS? Um, I believe so, so I, I know, I think AGDB, AGDB is uh, created in ANSYS itself, right? Um, so it's, uh, um, it reads kind of very similarly. I, I haven't tried opening one up in SOLIDWORKS, um, and I'm, what I'm guessing is that it won't be able to open, um, but um, in, in, in essence, it's, it's essentially the same thing. Okay. So it's, a, it's, just a, it's just a geometry file. Okay. So if you've loaded your ANSYS mechanical already, um, let's go ahead and, and load the geometry. So if you have this kind of pop-up um, that tells you, you know, what's new in ANSYS mechanical 2019, um, which it can't be that new because 2020 is out, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and click geometry or let's click model right here. Right? So on the left-hand side of the screen, you should see your project outline. So you go ahead and left-click model, right? And if you do that, then you should get your signpost to show up. Okay? Um, so if you remember the mouse controls, if you want to kind of rotate this, you uh, you hold down the center click. Uh, so that's your uh, um, your mouse wheel if you have a mouse, right? Um, if, you have, if you're on the trackpad, I'm actually not sure how to how to click that. Um, so if you click on the mouse wheel and kind of move your mouse, you can rotate your model just like this. Okay. If you want to pan um, the camera, the way you can do that is you can hold down control if you have a, a Windows laptop and then click the mouse wheel and then you can pan left or right. Okay. Um, so those are kind of really um, you know, useful uh, mouse controls for this, uh, um, for this kind of thing. So who's still uh, loading up ANSYS Mechanical? So if you're if you're still waiting on ANSYS, um, can you just uh, give me a just a quick thing in the chat. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, if uh, if everyone is uh, um, uh, is loaded, then we can go ahead. Okay. So there's a question. So the question is, why isn't there a fixed support or base support like in the PDF of the activity? So there is a base support. So it's uh, um, it's kind of the last boundary condition that we that we're going to apply, uh, but basically we're gonna we're gonna set the the bottom of the signpost right here to be fixed. Okay? Uh, but I, I kind of just only mention it in a paragraph, so there's there's no picture for it. But you definitely need to fix your um, um, you definitely need to fix your signpost so the wind doesn't kind of blow it away. Okay? Uh, but we'll get there. You know the boundary conditions will will kind of save to the to the end. Okay. Um, so if everyone's loaded ANSYS Mechanical, let's go ahead and move uh, move forward. Okay? Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to assign the material properties. Okay. So remember, we have two distinct parts of our uh, of our geometry. So we have the sign and we have the post itself. And so each of them are going to have different, uh, they're made of a different material. Okay. So we need to make sure, we need to make sure ANSYS knows that. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the left-hand side menu. So where it says geometry. So let's go ahead and click this, uh, this down menu. Right. So once you've clicked the, uh, the expanded menu, you should see the three, uh, three parts of your geometry. So the post, if you left click that, that's the um, that's the uh, the cylindrical post for your signpost. Next thing is going to be the uh, the sign itself, okay. Um, and then last, we have this WX2 application surface. Okay? So if you actually rotate your uh, your model, you can see that we've created this kind of extra surface, right? So it's literally like someone just put duct tape on the side of our um, on the side of our um, our model, okay, um, and kind of. Um, you know, conceptually, that's kind of what you can think of it. So it's it's not going to add anything, um, you know, significant to the model. It's just going to uh, it's just going to be a way for us to apply a force um, to that side. Okay, uh, but we'll deal with that later. So first thing we need to do is we need to assign our material properties. So to do that, um, you can go ahead and left click post. Right. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to assign the uh, this post to be structural steel. Okay. So after you left click post, and you can go to the bottom left of the details. Okay? 
So let me go ahead and highlight that. Right. So remember, you know, a lot of times the uh, the uh, the entry or the data entry that you do in ANSYS is going to be in the bottom left. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead, go ahead and clear that. So we need to assign a material property to this. Okay. So the way you're going to do that is you're going to go to the bottom left. And you can see this, uh, this menu here for material, right? Okay. And then underneath material, you should see a menu that says um, assignment. Okay. So uh, what we need to do is we need to make sure that this is structural steel. So actually right now it is. Okay. So, if, but if you want to change the material, you can go ahead to this bottom left of the screen, right? You can click on this. And if, when you click on it, a, a right arrow will show up. And then from here, you can click a different material. Okay. But in this case, for the post, we actually want it to be structural steel, so we can keep it like that. Okay. Uh, but for the sign, we want to make a different material property. Okay. So for the sign, let's go ahead and left click sign solid body from the, uh, from the project outline up here. And then for the material assignment, let's change this to aluminum. Okay. So all I did there was I click sign, and then I clicked aluminum 6061 T6 down here. Okay, so pretty straightforward. So, uh, um, you know, if you already have like a SOLIDWORKS assembly um, or, you know, if you created an assembly of parts in ANSYS, um, assigning them different material properties is pretty simple. So all you have to do is make sure you assign the material or you define the material beforehand. And then once you're in ANSYS Mechanical, you, uh, you, define, those, um, you define those material properties, okay? And you set them to the appropriate parts. Any questions on, uh, on this part? Okay. Okay. So the, the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, deal with our little piece of tape right here. Okay. Um, so remember what, what we, what I talked about before is that this, what this surface right here, it, it's not an actual kind of real surface on our model. So we're not actually putting a piece of tape there, um, but it's kind of just like a helper surface to help us, you know, assign some kind of properties or in this case, assign a, a load. Okay. So if you remember from the project statement, there's a, uh, a spatially varying wind force that comes up on the left side of the, um, of the signpost, right? Uh, so what this surface is gonna do is it's gonna allow us a place to kind of put that force, okay? Okay, so we actually don't need to do too much here, but we do need to do something, right? Um, so if you can see here, so after I've clicked this WX2 application surface, what you should notice is that in the bottom left, there's a um, rectangle um, or an entry that's yellow, right? So remember, whenever you see a, uh, a yellow entry in ANSYS, that means you, it wants you to do something there before moving on, okay? So in this case, what we need to input is the thickness of our, um, of our kind of our phantom surface, okay? Um, so even though the surface doesn't exist, because we're doing, uh, you know, this is a three-dimensional simulation, everything needs, nothing can be like a totally two-dimensional thing, right? So we need to assign this, this part a little bit of a thickness, okay? So in, in this sense, it, it doesn't, so because the surface doesn't actually exist, it doesn't matter too much what you put for the thickness, as long as it's something that's non-zero. Okay? Um, but, you know, just to keep it realistic with the rest of the model, let's assign it to be something small. Okay? So in the PDF, what I've told you is that, you know, that thickness should be one E to the minus three inches. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so if your units are not in inches, like mine right now are in meters, um, let's go ahead and change the units. So to, to remember to change the units, you have to be in the home menu. And then you have to click this units right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and click in, um, and select it to be something in inches. Okay. So I'm going to click US customary inches, pound mass, pound force, uh, Fahrenheit, SVA. Okay. okay. And then once you do that, then uh, your thickness will be down here. Okay. So let's go ahead and put one E minus three. So if you don't see the units up here, um, I noticed that I didn't see it when I was using the virtual machine earlier. You might have to click a uh, um, another menu here called Tools. Okay, so there there might be another button here called Tools. So then once you click Tools and you go down there, then there might be a button um, that says Units. Okay? Uh, so if you don't see Units, that shows up right here. Click Tools, and then there should be the Units that shows up right there. Okay. Okay. Any questions on uh, on this so far? Yes. Oh, thank you. So the uh, the units are also in the bottom right corner. Ah, right here. Thank you. Okay, um, so you can also select the units down down here. Okay, 
Um, so if there's no more questions, that's, uh, that's it for the geometry. So let's go ahead and move on to the uh, connections. Okay, so the question right now is that if that surface wasn't already created uh, or you wanted to uh, put a specific area, does the surface need to be created? Um, and the answer is yes. Um, so I have, a, uh, I have a tutorial on how to do this. Um, so if you, uh, if you have a CAD model already and you want to kind of add like a phantom surface to apply and load, then you have to create that within uh, ANSYS itself. Uh, so we're not gonna go through that today because I wanna make sure we kind of get through um, everything, but I'll, I'll post the PDF so that you can use it for your, uh, for your projects. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Um, so the next thing that we need to deal with is the connections, right? So we have three different, um, we have three different um, parts here. So we need to determine, or we need to tell ANSYS how they're going to interact with each other. Okay? So actually ANSYS, you know, gives different ways for the, uh, for these surfaces to, to interact, right? So to do that, we need to go to this connections, okay? Right here. So what this is going to do, it's going to determine, um, or it's gonna allow us to set, give settings for uh, each of the different um, parts, okay? Um, so actually all, automatically ANSYS is going to define some connections for you, okay? Um, because, you know, ANSYS, you know, just creates these by default. So if you go under connections and then you go under contacts, then you should, so you should see three different regions. You should see contact region, contact region two, contact region three. So we have three regions here because we have three different parts and then this is kind of the connection between each part with each other. Okay? So if you actually left click this, um, um, these connections or these contacts, you can see kind of what they are in the model. Okay? So if you click contact region, the first one, and what you should see is that you should see kind of a red circle that's kind of defined right here. Okay? So what this contact region is, is that it defines the connection in between your post and the sign. Um, and then what you can see right here in the bottom left is that the default, um, the default connection type is bonded. Okay. Um, so when ANSYS doesn't know what to do with the connections, it assumes everything is basically welded together. Okay. Uh, so these two are basically kind of welded um, together right now. So in this activity, we're not going to change these. I'm just kind of just pointing you guys in that direction. Uh, but for your projects or for some of the future activities that we do, it might be, it might be uh, interesting to change this. So, so if you click this, you can see the different um, types of bonds that you can do. So you can either define that, they, that they're not gonna separate, uh, but they can slide uh, you know, past each other. You can say that the bond can be frictionless, right? And you can also define some friction, right? If you wanna do like a, like a dynamic simulation, which you're gonna do probably after spring break, okay? Okay, but for now, we're not gonna change this. So we're just gonna keep it as bonded, right? uh, So one thing that I want to do here, um, that for this project, you know, doesn't make, is not um, that big a deal since there's only three parts. But as you can imagine, you know, as if you're doing an assembly with many, many parts, there's, there's gonna be kind of a lot to, to keep track of, okay? uh, So what I like to do is I like to give these kind of um, different names so that they're kind of easier to keep track of, okay? So if it, to give this a different name, we can right click this. Okay? We can hit rename, okay? or the shortcut is F2, and we can give it a different name. Um, so what I'm going to define this is, is I'm going to call it the post sign connection uh, because this is the connection in between the post and the sign. Okay? So this way, you know, so if I'm kind of looking at this later, so if I want to change this to like a frictionless uh, bond, I can just look at the name and kind of know exactly what this is in the model. Okay? Um, so again, you know, this, is, this isn't that important for this, um, for this um, project because it's a, you know, a fairly simple one. Uh, but it's kind of a good, it's a good practice to, to do, to label your, uh, your, uh, your connections so that you kind of easily refer to them later, okay? This is especially important when you're working professionally and, you know, and you're, oftentimes you're going to be passing CAD models in between uh, different fellow engineers. Um, so it's going to be really difficult for you to say, you know, check uh, contact region 4 and 47 and 53, you know, so if you give them a name, it's a lot easier for you to, to do that, okay? Okay, so the, uh, uh, so the question is, does bonding encompass or would it work for all surface bonds, such as nut bolt fastening uh, or welds only? So, um, so I, 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 I mentioned welds because, you know, welds kind of uh, constrain every single um, degree of freedom, right? So when you weld two things together, you, it can't slide, it can't turn, it can't rotate, it can't really do anything like that. Um, but if things are bolted or, or um, together, then that, if it does kind of the same thing, then, um, you know, that's, that, that should work too. 
Right. So the only thing that you have to keep in mind that if you if you have nuts and bolts um, or something other than welds holding it together, a lot of times the uh, the structural um, stresses are going to be focused on the bolts. Um, so if you're kind of interested in that part of your finite element analysis, then you have to be a little bit more careful in how you model you model that. Right? Yeah, great great question though. Okay, okay. Um, so that's the post and the sign connection. Um, so the other two contact regions are between kind of our phantom surface and the other two parts in the model. Okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and label these. So contact region two is between our phantom surface and the post. Right? So let's go ahead and re rename this phantom post connection. Okay? And then contact region three is going to be between phantom and the um, and the sign. Okay? So let's call this phantom sign connection. Okay, and again, you know, we don't have to change any of the uh, the settings here, um, but um, you know, for future, you you might want to do that. Okay. Any questions on contacts? Okay, uh, so there's no questions on contacts. Let's go ahead and move on. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is we need to apply a mesh on this guy. Uh, so the mesh is going to be a little bit more complicated, not, not that much more, but just a little more because we have two separate parts. So what the two separate parts are going to allow us to do is it, it's going to allow us to apply different meshing um, settings, different meshing methods, and different mesh sizing. Okay? Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a mesh object for each of those. Okay? Uh, so to do that, you can go ahead and on your project outline, go to the mesh portion right here. Okay? Uh, so go ahead and right click mesh. And then what we're going to do is we're going to insert um, two things. So we're going to, you know, for every mesh, remember, we need to define the, the method for our mesh. So we need to define what are the element shapes that we're going to use and the element um, shape function order. Okay. Uh, so we do that with the method. And then we also need to create a sizing object, which allows us to change the size of that, of that mesh. Okay? So in this case, we're not going to apply any refinements. So we're just going to keep it just as method and size. Okay? So first, let's do method. Okay? So let's go ahead and uh, right click mesh. Let's do insert and then method. So you can see that we've created a method object right here. Um, so if you go to the bottom left of the screen, you, you should see that it's uh, it's asking you what part of the geometry that you want to apply it to. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and left click geometry, just like as we always have. And then let's click the post. Okay. So let's do the post first. So left click post and then click apply. Okay. okay. So then now we can see we've created a, a, um, a meshing object for the post. Right? So we need to um, decide what kind of method that we're going to use. So if you go back to the bottom left of the screen, so you go to the method part, and you can see right now it's, it's choosing automatically. Right? Um, so you can, you can let it do it automatically if you want, but you know, since we're in a finite element class, we can, we can customize this a little bit more. So since we know that this post is a pretty rounded object, Let's define this uh, the shape uh, the uh, the shapes to be tetrahedrons, okay? because we know that you know tetrahedrons are going to work a lot better for um, um, for rounded objects like this. Okay? Okay. And then the other thing that we need to select is the element order. Um, so since we know that we're running a structural mechanics and we're we run the risk of shear locking, so in order to um, to account for that, let's click let's click a quadratic element. Okay. okay. So the question is, is that the one uh, it would do automatically in this case? So I think uh, automatically it would probably select a, a tetrahedron for, uh, for this guy. Okay. But, but, don't rely on, but don't rely on it too much. Okay? Especially for your project, you know, it's for, the, for your project, you know, I, I want you guys to really play with the, with the settings and, you know, make every choice kind of as thoughtful as you can. Okay. okay. So that's the, um, the uh, uh, method for the post. So let's create a sizing object. So let's go ahead and right-click mesh. Let's go ahead and click sizing. Right? Uh, so it's going to ask you to select a geometry just like before. So let's go ahead and click the post. Let's go ahead and click apply. Okay. And then now it's going to ask you to click an element size. Okay. So the default is going to be about seven inches. Um, um, so let's change this to be just a little bit smaller. So let's make this six inches. And then uh, besides that, there's uh, kind of nothing else that we need to uh, that we need to change here on the um, on the sizing. Okay? So then let's do the same thing for the sign. Okay, so for the sign, we need to make a method object. 
and then we need to make a sizing. So let's go ahead and right-click mesh, click method. Okay. Let's go ahead and click the uh, the sign part, click apply. Uh, so right now it's an automatic method. So let's go ahead and choose the shapes. So since this is a very, you know, it's the blockiest of the block um, kind of object that we can uh, do. So let's create a hex dominant mesh, right? And then just like we did for the post, since we're doing structural mechanics, let's, click, let's uh, choose a quadratic um, um, element order, okay? Just to make sure that we don't get any shear blocking. And then finally, let's insert a sizing object. So go ahead and right click mesh and click sizing. Go ahead and click the sign just like before. So the default here is uh, seven. Right? So um, I'll tell you right now that the sign is nothing that interesting is gonna happen in the sign. So we can go ahead and course in the mesh a little bit in the sign. So let's make this none, okay? Because okay. remember, you know, where we want to refine our mesh are the places where, you know, the solution is gonna be the most interesting, okay? So in this case, most of the interesting stuff is gonna happen in the post. So that's why we made the mesh a little bit smaller. Um, so then now that we've uh, defined those, let's go ahead and generate our mesh. So let's go ahead and right click mesh and click generate mesh. Right. So it's gonna take a couple minutes. Right. You might get a warning, but that's okay. Right. And you should see your mesh is generated. So I, I pick kind of two pretty different sizes for the, the sign and the post, just so you can kind of see, right? So if you look at our mesh here, we can see that our post is made of tetrahedron. So you see all these triangles, um, like we said before, and then the sign itself is made of hexes. So it's made of rectangles. And you can see the mesh here is a lot more coarse than it is in the post. Okay. Yeah, so the question is, would it be common practice to name your methods and sizing? And um, the answer is yes. And that's actually the next thing we're going to do. Uh, so just like we did with the connections, we're going to give names to our uh, to our objects here, just so we know, right? Because right now we have names like body sizing and body sizing two, so that doesn't tell us anything about what these are referring to. Okay? So let's go ahead and rename these. Okay. So let's rename this. So this is going to be our method object for the post. Okay? So I'm going to name that method post. Next is going to be the sizing. So this is going to be sizing for the post. Next, we have the method for the sign. And next we have the um, sizing for these sign, okay? Okay, so then that's, uh, that's our mesh, okay? Any questions on the, uh, on the mesh before we jump into the boundary conditions? Okay. So we're running a little bit short on time, so I wanna make sure that we get through the boundary conditions, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna go a little bit faster here because we have, we have a lot of boundary conditions that we need to apply, okay? Okay, so if we go to the next section of the, of the PDF, you can see that um, it's gonna be problem two. So problem two is called loads and constraints. Um, so on loads and constraints, we can see that we have four loads that we need to do. So we need to do the weight of the post, we need to do the weight of the sign, we need the wind load in the, on the uh, kind of the broad side of the sign and the varying wind load on the left side. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do these one by one. Uh, so let's start with the weight of the post. Okay. okay. So the weight of the post is we're gonna apply it as a force boundary condition. Okay. Okay. So the, uh, the, uh, the value of that um, force is gonna be one, three, four, two, two pound. Um, so that weight is actually given to you in the PDF. So, you know, I've kind of written it here just so you can kind of see, uh, but that, that should be in the PDF. Okay. So let's go ahead and apply this. So let's go ahead and um, right click here. So remember to apply boundary conditions, we need to um, right click static structural, right? And then we're gonna insert a force, okay? So we insert a force, okay? And then now what it's gonna ask us to do, it's gonna ask us to apply it on a specific surface, right? So the weight of the post, if you go back to our original figure, is gonna be applied on the top of the post uh, right here, okay? But we have a problem. So we, uh, we actually can't see the top of the post because the sign is freaking in the way, okay? So we need to, get, we need to suppress this, uh, this sign you know, just so that we can access that, um, that part of the post, okay? Um, so we're gonna suppress this. So if you remember how to suppress um, from last time, then that's a, a good thing, but let me kind of show you quickly. So if you go ahead and go back up to geometry in your project outline, 
you go ahead and right click your sign uh, solid body, right? And then what we want to, to do is we want to suppress this body. So go ahead and click suppress, and you can see that the, uh, the sign is no longer there, which is good, okay? So then let's go back down to our force object that we created, right? So for the geometry, uh, we need to select the part of the geometry we want. So let's go ahead and click this, uh, this, the top of this post, right? Because if we look at the, uh, um, the PDF, this is where we need to apply the force boundary condition. So go ahead and click apply, right? So now we're applying a force on this surface, right? Um, and then we wanted to find the, uh, the magnitude of this force, okay? So if we go down here, um, remember the way that we define the forces, we usually do it by components. Um, so we go down to the bottom left where we click define by. The default here is a vector. Um, so let's go ahead and click um, the, down, um, the down arrow and click components, right? So this lets us pick kind of the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the, of the force that we want to pick, right? So in this case, we have a force that's going to be in the negative Z direction. So let's put minus one, three, four, two, two into, the, uh, uh, into here, okay? So go ahead and click enter. And you can see that we've input a force um, that goes down just like that. All right, any questions on, on that and how we suppress the sign and we put a force that goes downward just like, like that? I guess, the, I guess the nice thing about having this recorded and put on YouTube is that you can kind of you know, rewind and kind of watch me kind of do it in, in real time, which, you know, which I've always kind of found to be kind of the most helpful for learning software is to kind of see someone do it, rewind it, and then kind of do it uh, again. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and move on. So, uh, so we, uh, now that we've applied this force, we can bring back the sign. So let's go ahead and right click sign up here and let's unsuppress this body. Okay. So now the sign is back. Okay. So the next thing we need to apply is the weight of the sign itself. Right? Uh, so we're going to need another force object. Right? So let's go ahead and insert a force. So let's go ahead and right click static structural insert and then insert a force. And then let's uh, select the top surface of the sign. Okay, so let's go ahead and click up there. Okay. And then let's go ahead and click apply, just to make sure that we, we've selected this uh, this face. Okay. Um, so I know I, there might be some questions on you know if these forces are supposed to be the weights of these objects, why are we applying it on the the tops of the object? Right. Uh, normally, you know, when you have the weight of an object, you apply it at the center of the object. Uh, so that's an excellent question, um, and you know that you would be correct. Um, so normally when you have the weight of an object, you would want to actually apply it at the centroid. But, you know, because of this, uh, because of this project and, you know, the way that it's kind of um, is, um, you know, and kind of just kind of how we are in, you know, learning about the different parts of the uh, ANSYS program, um, I'm just choosing to do it like this. But if you, if you, you know, want to incorporate weight into your projects, then it'd probably be better to, to put it at the centroids of your, um, of your geometries. Okay. Okay. Um, so now that we've selected the surface, let's go ahead and input the magnitude. So just like before, we're going to click down here and let's click components. Okay. And then once again, we're going to apply a force in the Z direction. And then we say that the weight of the sign is going to be minus 14000 pounds. Okay. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And then uh, we're good with that. Okay. Okay, so the question is, can you also accelerate your reference rate upward at 32.2 feet per second instead of those? Um, yes. Oh, yes. Um, well, you, in this case, you want them to go downwards because these are kind of the weights of, of gravity. So you want them to kind of go towards the, the ground because this, this sign is kind of straightening up, straight up. Um, but yeah, you can, you can choose the forces to be kind of in any direction that you choose. Uh, but you often want to choose these to be kind of uh, reflective of your of your physical situation. Okay. okay. Any questions on how we do? Any more questions? How we do the the weight forces? Okay. So then now let's do the uh, the wind forces, right? So now we have two. Actually, before before we move on, let's uh, let's give these uh, these forces a name, right? So remember, you know, we have we should name these just so we know what they are. So let's go ahead and rename this. So this is going to be the weight of post. This force right here is going to be the weight of the sign. Okay. 
All right, so now that we've done that, we're ready to apply the other forces. So let's go ahead and right click static structural and let's insert another uh, force, okay? Okay, so this force is gonna represent the, the wind force that's gonna be on our, on our object, okay? Okay. Um, so we, uh, uh, let's see. Okay, so what's gonna be different here is that we're going to apply this, um, this force at a point, okay? Um, so the point is gonna be right in the middle of your, of your sign right here. So right now the default is to apply the force at a surface. So what we need to do is we need to change this to a, a point. Okay? So if you go up to this part of ANSYS right here, okay? You can see that this, is, this allows us to select different, um, different types of places in our, uh, in our model. Okay? So right now it's set to surface, which is gonna be this third option. And we need to want to change, and we want to change this to points. So let's go ahead and click this one right here, right? The one on the far left to select points. Okay. And then uh, what you need to do is you need to kind of play a little bit of a minesweeper a little bit, and then go into the middle portion of your uh, of your model. And then when you mouse over the middle, you should see a little gray dot that shows up when you mouse over it. Okay. It might be a little bit hard to find, but you know if you mouse over that center portion, you should see that that dot. So let's go ahead and click that dot. Okay? So once you click the dot, it should turn green, and then go ahead and click uh, apply. Okay? So now that we've uh, now we've selected this uh, this point to be um, you know where we want to put the force. Okay? Um, uh, so you're probably wondering you know how that point got there to begin with. Uh, so that point was put um, within ANSYS itself. So very similar to how you do you have to create a phantom surface to um, to apply a force there. You also have to create, you know, phantom dots in your uh, in your model too. So if there's if there's ever a point in your model where you want to apply a point load, you have to go into Ansys Design Model and put a point. Uh, but that'll be outlined. That'll be outlined how we do that in a in a PDF later on too. Okay. Uh, but this is just to show you, you know, once you've created that point, you can select it to uh, to apply a force. Okay. Okay. So then now that we've done that, we need to um, select the magnitude and direction of the force. Okay. So let's go ahead and click components, just like we always did, right? And then let's click a, let's select a force in the Y direction, okay? So according to the PDF, we need to select a force of 8,000. So let's go ahead and click uh, Y component and hit 8,000 and then hit enter, okay? And you can see that now we have a force that's going into the page, you know, that's, that's kind of representing the drag force that's on this, uh, um, on this sign. And then before we move on, let's rename this. So let's go ahead and right click this, click rename and say win force Y. Okay. Okay, any questions on, on this? Okay. Uh, so then let's, uh, let's do the, um, the final uh, win force, okay. Um, so just like before, so we're going to right-click static structural. Okay? Uh, but in this case, instead of a force, we're going to put a pressure. Okay? So let's go ahead and click pressure. Right? So that's going to create a pressure object here. Okay? And so what you need to do here is you need to, if you need to rotate your model, you can do that. Because the, way, the, uh, the surface that we're going to apply this on is our little tape surface that we um, have here. So you might need to zoom in, and I think the uh, what I find is the best place to, to click it is actually on the post portion. Okay? So if you zoom in to the post, you kind of mouse over this um, this strip here so that it uh, it highlights that. Okay? So you go ahead and left click that strip, and you should see that just that strip of a of a, a phantom surface should highlight green. Okay? So once you do that, go ahead and click apply. Okay. Uh, so then that's we've selected our geometry. Okay. So at this point, we need to input the time varying or the spatially varying uh, pressure force. Okay? Um, so to do that, we need to make sure, first of all, you need to make sure that you're in the right units. Because okay? in, uh, um, in the project um, description, we know that the, uh, the pressure force is given in PSI. Okay? So you need to make sure that your, uh, your units there are PSI. Okay? So if your units are not PSI, you need to change the units. Um, so uh, remember, you can do that. You can either do it from the top menu or you can do it from the bottom right here. Okay? So if you click in the bottom right, make sure you're on US customary inch, pound mass, pound force, Fahrenheit, S, N, D. Okay, okay. 
So then now what we need to do is we need to input a function into this pressure, okay? just to make sure we have the appropriate magnitude. So if, if you're familiar with using Excel, um, then we're gonna input basically a function here um, for that um, magnitude. Okay? Uh, so, to, so to indicate to ANSYS that we're putting in a function, we need to start with an equal sign. Okay? And then from here, we need to follow this up with our function. Okay? So the function that we're gonna input according to the PDF is gonna be 0 0.1 multiplied by and then Z. Okay. So Z is a, is a special character within ANSYS that tells you to, uh, to scale it based off the Z coordinate of our, of our model. Okay. So if you do that, you can go ahead and click enter. Okay. And you should see you know, this bar show up that shows you kind of the magnitude of the pressure pulse. Okay. So it should start at zero or very close to zero at the bottom of the post. And then as you get up to the top of the post, you should reach a maximum of 43.1994. Right. And then before we move on, let's go ahead and give this a different name. So let's go ahead and right click this and then call it win pressure. Okay. okay. Any questions um, on the boundary conditions? Oh, we have to put the fixed support. So that's the most important thing. Okay. So the question is, you know, why do we apply a pressure instead of a force again? So, um, that's really kind of de depends on how your problem is defined. So in this case, the uh, the wind force that's on the left side, um, you know, usually you know you usually get these boundary conditions from measurements. Um, so it, what it, what probably happened was that there was a pressure sensor on the left side of that sign, and they found that you know the pressure there was psi. And then for all of the other forces, you know, the weights, you know, obviously we can compute that you know either by weighing the structure itself, um, or by multiplying the density by the volume, right? And then for the wind force that's going to be on the uh, on the sign itself, it could be that they just used um, some fluid mechanics formula to uh, to compute the drag force, and that's how they did that's how they did that. Okay. Um, but you know that's it, not a that's uh, not a requirement. So you can actually get the same results as long as you uh, are careful with how you uh, convert the units. So you can get the same results if you do a pressure versus a force. It's just you'd have to change the values according to um, you know the surface area of your of your model itself. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and insert our fixed support. So let's go ahead and right click static um, structural A5. We can do insert, okay? And then we need to do our fixed support here, okay? So go ahead and click fixed support. So we need to click the geometry. So go ahead and click the, uh, the surface at the bottom of our post. So let's go ahead and hit apply there. Um, let's go ahead and rename this post. Okay, um, so with that, all the boundary conditions are taken care of. So at this point in the, uh, um, this is kind of as far as I kind of want to take you for the activity. So a lot of it, you know, for the prediction and the analysis results, um, I want you guys to do that yourself, okay? But we'll do, we'll do one here just to kind of show you that it works. Uh, so let's define our first outlet field. So let's um, insert the total deformation, okay? So to do that, we need to define um, what field we want ANSYS to, to do. So go ahead and right click solution A6. Let's go ahead and click insert. And then deformation, let's click total. Okay. Right. So now what you're asking ANSYS to do, it's, you're gonna ask it to output the, uh, the total deformation for your model. Okay. So if you look at problem four in the, uh, in the, in the um, activity, I'm gonna ask you to output a lot of other um, fields, right? So things like the normal stress. Um, or the equivalent stress, right? So we won't we won't show those here, but make sure you uh, you kind of remember how to do a multiple insert or multiple outlet fields. Okay. So to add more, all you have to do is right click solution A6 insert, and then just click the ones that you want. So let's actually add one more. So let's do the equivalent stress. Okay? Um, but in the in the homework, you know, I want you to do a few more. Okay. Um, so with that, you know, we have everything we need to solve. So let's go ahead and click solve up here. This lightning bolt. Allow access. Ansys is being weird. Right, so if you miss that, the uh, the lighting bolt is, is up here, right? So that's gonna you know you do that after you put in all your boundary conditions and all your outlet fields. Okay? Um, so if you do that, let's view the total deformation. You should see something that looks like this. Okay? So you can see that once we applied all of our forces, the uh, the sign is gonna be deforming the most over here. So you know, this is exaggerated a little bit, um, as you can imagine. Um, 
because the sine is you know literally kind of tipping over on itself because of all the, the different forces. Okay? Um, but that's as far as I want to take you. So you know the rest of the activity is going to be up to you. Uh, so the rest of the activity is going to be um, a lot of you know playing with the uh, the different parameters that we went over and uh, producing a lot of output fields. And most of all, you know, writing a report at the end to kind of summarize your results. Okay. Uh, so with that, you know, we're uh, we're basically out of time for today. Uh, so that was our first virtual lecture. So hopefully that went uh, smoother than uh, I felt like it did. Um, but you know, we're going to be like this for the uh, the rest uh, of the semester. Okay. Uh, so the question is: Is it uh, is the fixed space actually tilted? Uh, so no. So the fixed space should actually be zero. So actually, if you go to the um, to the uh, deformation, you can see right here that we have a minimum of zero. So you can see actually the base it actually is a, a zero displacement right here. Um, but everything else is kind of tilting just like, like that. So normally, you know, if we go to the, uh, back to the geometry, you can see that the post is kind of standing straight up and we go to the deformation, it starts to tilt again. Okay, okay uh, so we're out of time for today. Um, okay. Um, right, so if your computer crashed trying to run Zoom and, uh, and Ansys at the same time, which is not surprising, um, then, uh, then you know, this will be up on YouTube for you guys to view later. Okay? Uh, so with that, I'm going to sign off for today. So thank you guys all for coming to our first virtual lecture. Uh, so if you have any feedback on, you know, things that might be more helpful to you, um, then definitely let me know, right? Um, so I, I imagine a lot of the Ansys activities are going to be like this, where I kind of do it in real time and I share my screen with you. Uh, but for the other uh, lectures where we need to do lecture, um, then uh, probably I, I'm going to use my iPad and kind of write on the iPad so we can follow along in, uh, on that, okay? Uh, but I haven't tried that yet, so uh, that'll be kind of an adventure. Actually, tomorrow's lectures will be more of the guinea pigs for that. Um, so, you know, this will be something that we continue, that I will continue to develop, um, you know, throughout the, uh, throughout the semester, because I think we're going to be like this for quite a while, okay? Uh, so I'll see you guys on... Um, I guess maybe not on Thursday because we have a non-instructional day. Um, but, you know, stay safe, everyone. Stay healthy. And I will see you guys um, next time I see you, okay? Uh, so if you, uh, if you, oh, so I do have office hours after this. So if you want to talk to me during office hours, then click the Zoom link that was in the announcement earlier today, okay? Okay, so I'm going to end the meeting. Uh, so thank you, everybody. And uh, have a good evening.